just like running touchdowns, like hearing the crowd and chant my name, like it feels good. I knew he was fast. I knew he was fast. I knew he had a really good work ethic. I think the ceiling for him is sky high. I'm Nicholas Singleton, I'm 15 years old, and I play running back. I got over 1,274 yards and 15 touchdowns. My best bench is 335. My best squad is 500 pounds. My best clean is 286. He was a little aggressive when he was four or five. You can see the aggressiveness in him. I believe I was probably four years old playing flag football. So we put him in flag, he enjoyed it. Actually, he enjoyed getting flags more than running because, you know, at that age. So that's what kind of got him going. Nicholas would be like, okay, mommy, I'm going to get seven flags today. And if I get seven flags, you're going to take me to go get ice cream or something. <laughs> and he would go get his seven flags and they would go get their ice cream. I think the first time I kind of thought he kind of had was actually when he played with another group of kids and he didn't start. And I could see that it was like, okay, I need to do this, this, and this if I want to start and be good. And him being able to pick that up at an early age and not being satisfied with just watching other kids. So then you knew that he kind of got, well, I better get faster or I better get stronger, or I better work on a move if I want to play. In middle school, like, I always score touchdowns. Like, it's not that hard, but when I got to high school, like, it was really, really hard. We had the ball, Nicholas ran, and he hit an older kid, and he didn't, he went down. And then my brother had the game, he said, dude, you know, he, he's good, but he got to get stronger. So just at that moment, I was dealing with Neil. Like, dude, you should come out the garage. I started training at garage when I was 12 years old in sixth grade. His dad pretty much told us like, listen, he's fast and everybody knows he's fast. So he needs to build the strength and the durability so that he can stay on the field as well as excel his speed and power because we knew but probably when he got to high school, he wasn't gonna be playing quarterback anymore. He'll be more of like a running back, linebacker, safety kind of type. So initially, right off the bat, when he first came, you were like, okay, this kid could be good because he has pop, he has the work ethic, he has everything. My first day, I thought it would be hard. Like, my legs were sore after. The bar exploded off of his hip, and this is the first time he ever cleaned, and he actually cleaned pretty well. And then the single leg squat, you saw the strength that he could build. Then you saw him push himself in the prowler. So we kind of hit every aspect that this kid is special. The weight was heavy, but when I got like, when I kept doing it, it got easier. I could probably throw away any camp, any preseason, any speed training. If he wouldn't have come to garage at 11, 11 and almost 12, he wouldn't have played last year. We knew he was fast. So he kind of had that speed already. So that's a very, positive thing because that's something a little harder to build in a football player. The strength portion is very simple. You just, they just got to keep coming and keep working and we'll put them through the workouts that'll get them to where they need to be strength wise. But the speed part is really where you have somebody that has that speed and then you come in and you build their strength. Their speed is automatically going to get even better. And that's kind of where it rolls into him being a very gifted athlete. It's been good. Like, I've been getting better every day with the weights and getting stronger faster. I bet my house he would not be playing varsity football. He would not have rushed for a thousand or whatever yards. He just would not have. He just couldn't have been strong enough. In here at garage, 
there's like a lot of trainers. They really train me. They tell me what to put on. And they really push me hard. Specifically for a football player, our training is a little different because we use Olympic weightlifting and we do full movements. So it's full snatch all the way down into the hole. Same with clean. We feel like that translates better over to the sport. And then as well as we still do back squats, front squats, more of like the bodybuilding, powerlifting kind of thing. Then once they hit a certain strength level, that's where we use plyometrics to actually translate that strength from the gym over to the field. So we'll do different kind of box jumps that simulates them being on the field. So for instance, a running back, they start on one leg, they jump forward onto that same leg and then jump over to the side. So that simulates them cutting and then they have to do single leg jumps ahead as well. So that simulates them cutting on the field and then having to accelerate as fast as possible. In seventh grade, I didn't used to do snatching. Like I only did, I only did clean, like single leg squat, but now doing snatch, clean, back squat, like all those things. If you think your kid can play at a certain level, whether it's division two, II, division three, II, division one, um, I, it's so competitive now, you have to push them or not. Well, yeah, push them and help them with weight training, with some type of training. Other kids his age do not train like him. So it takes a true commitment to do what Nick does. That's where I say Nick is not the most gifted athlete we've ever had, but he's the best trained athlete we've had because he has been coming since sixth grade and now he's going to 10th grade and you just see the benefits of him coming three to four days every week for four years. We don't work as hard, some kids do, but mostly not. You can't get reps back. Like if you miss a day, you miss that rep. So the longer you wait, so these parents are like, oh, I'm gonna wait till he's a sophomore, I'm gonna wait till he's a junior. You lost all that time from seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, you just lost all that. And it's highly unlikely you're gonna catch somebody that's been working that long. It's just, it can happen, but you have to really work to catch that kid. For Nick to reach his potential, the biggest thing that he has to do is just keep staying consistent. Like he needs to keep coming three to four days a week. He needs to work on his mobility at home. He's starting to get his nutrition down. So that's gonna play a huge factor into him recovering during the season and playing really well this year. He just needs to keep doing what he's doing and trust that like over the next three to four years, it's just gonna keep building and building and building. And then it's just gonna keep getting easier and better for him. It's hard because you're grinding when other kids are at the pool, you're, doing some things when other kids may be want to go to a party. You're, you know, there's a lot of things you have to give up to try to reach your goal, your goal. It's not my goal, because I'm a mailman. <laughs> I have my life. There's a lot of things you're going to have to give up, but just realize that at the end, it'll be worth it. You know, I, I just had a conversation with a coach and we talked about, you know, kids think about the NFL or, and all that stuff. And that's a long way off. But everybody in this room went to college. And your student loans are probably 20 years student loan. If you can get a four year scholarship, dude, that, that's a big saving. Because you talk to anybody with a student loan, that's like, you know, depending on what school you go to, that's a lot of money to pay back. So if you can keep grinding and just get a four year scholarship, all this will be worth it. You may not see it now because you're not paying any bills, but after, you know, when you do get out into the workforce and you don't have a student loan, that is a, and a college degree, that is what it's for. For rushing yards, I'm hoping to get 2,000. That's what I really want. It's a big goal, but I think I can do it. And for touchdowns, probably over 20. Just to thank him for everything he does for me, that I love him. He does so much for me, driving me all these camps, paying for this, like, I really appreciate it. I think the ceiling for him is sky high. He could really go anywhere he wants in college, and I truly believe that he could eventually one day get into the NFL. Right after the interview, 
Dean told me that Nick just got offered by Penn State and he is going to be a sophomore in high school and just got offered. So Nick, when you watch this man, I'm so proud of you. I can't probably can't say that. Probably shouldn't say that. But I'm so proud of you. This is absolutely what we've been working for since sixth grade and this is one of many offers to come. Love it.